So I want to welcome you to the introduction to uh, ionized water webinar series. This is part two. Tonight we're going to talk about free radicals and antioxidants. We touched on it last week, but I want to bring it more into focus this week so that you truly understand what free radicals are and why antioxidants are so important. Because we talked a lot last week about the fact that antioxidants are really the most important part of ionized water um, that you get from your enagic units, but I want to explain to you exactly why that is tonight. <clears throat> so uh, just as a reminder, I'm Dr. Peggy Parker. I'm a naturopath and a European biological medicine physician, and it was during my European biological medicine uh, courses that I first learned about ionized water. And uh, the machine that I bought on the recommendation of my professor was not a very good machine for at least for the quality of the water in the United States. And I did not notice any good results for myself or my patients on their tests. So I just set it aside. And as I explained to you, I got really ill and it was my illness that drove me to trying um, Kangen water. And in that first meeting that I went to when I drank four 16 ounce glasses of water, miracles happened for me. Uh, my body really took that ball and ran with it and began to work really hard to heal itself. Because our bodies really are self healing machines, we just have to give them the tools they need to heal themselves. And so that leads me to this. My favorite, the favorite thing that I learned, or the most important things that I learned in my European biological medicine courses are that if you can create a slight shift in the pH of blood, urine, and saliva. Now, this is the way I learned it. I'm going to tell you later how it really fits together, but this is how I learned it. If you could create a slight shift in, the, in this order, if you could create a slight shift in the pH of the blood, urine, and the saliva, if you could then reduce oxidation on the cell membrane, and then if you could get more minerals into the cells, it would give the body the tools it needs to truly heal itself of virtually anything. So this is, this is the order in which I learned it. So when I bought my machine, like most of you, I was totally focused on the pH of the water and how that pH was going to make a shift um, that that alkaline water was going to make a shift in my blood and my urine and my saliva and that was going to get the whole ball rolling so um, that's where I was confused and that's where biological medicine had a had something um, had an order out of place and that's partially what we're going to talk about tonight so um, if you have visited your doctor, as we talked about last time, if you've ever visited your doctor and had to fill out one of those forms, you see that there are so many uh, things in your health history. And so doctors would say to you that your DNA is, uh, is really, if you have all of those things, you are destined to uh, get some of these diseases. But as I explained last week, once I started studying uh, the effects of ionized water on my patients, um, in addition to the things that they were doing um, as a, you know, that I was having them do as a naturopath, what I learned was that your DNA is truly not your destiny. It came back to this. If we could do these things, if we could, if we could shift in the pH, if we could reduce oxidation, if we could get more minerals into the cells, what I noticed was that I was seeing dramatically fast turnaround in so many people's health that gave me the proof that a body, that when we give the body the tools it needs, a body truly could heal itself of virtually anything. It doesn't matter where it falls on this chart, whether it's at the top of your head or down at your tiptoes, it doesn't matter where it is, anywhere on this chart, your body actually can be set up to do some amazing self-healing. What I learned after studying all of this is that oxidation actually 
was connected to dehydration and dehydration was connected to inflammation. Now at the beginning, I really, I could see all of this. I just couldn't figure out exactly how it was all connected. But I saw that this was, that there were some pieces here uh, based on tests that I was taking on patients that were really quite informative. And so it took me some time to figure out that this was actually the order of what was causing a downward spiral in health, that oxidation was actually leading to dehydration. And when our cells became dehydrated, they actually, the pH was shifting. And when that happened, inflammation took over. So we're going to go into this in quite a bit of detail tonight but we're gonna review our ionized water basics, okay? Remember, we're, we talked first about atoms, and an atom is just a single, a single unit of an element. So here we have oxygen. Oxygen has the atomic number or signature of zero, eight, and that just means that there are eight electrons, eight protons, and eight neutrons in an oxygen atom. And so as you look on the periodic table, the periodic, the periodic table of elements, you see that fluorine has its own signature, that chlorine has its own signature, everything has its own signature. And when there's just one of these elements, just one single unit of this element, it's called an atom. But atoms can bond together in different ways to create molecules. And here are two different molecules. So H2 are two hydrogens that have bonded together. They're in a, they're in a relationship here. And because they're together, there's two of them, it has the signature of H2 or two, two atoms of, mo of hydrogen that have come together to make an, a molecule. Now that's just a single element molecule. And you could have 10 hydrogens or 20 hydrogens, but that was all, that would just be a single element, right? But you could also have mixed elements, like in the case of water. We have H hydrogen, O oxygen, and H hydrogen. And so its atomic uh, shortcut is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen that are all bonded together in a way that forms a molecule. And here is a up close and personal picture of, of a water molecule. So water is either H2O or, or HOH, which is actually more correct, is hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen. And so in this illustration, you can see that the hydrogen uh, electrons are blue and the oxygen are green. So you can see how they're sharing their electrons together in orbit. And, and you can count, in a single water molecule, there are 10 electrons. So everything's paired, everything's stable, everything's great, okay? Now an ion happens when something disturbs a molecule and one of the, el one of the elements is knocked out of orbit, but it leaves its electron behind. Because now here in this, in these two ions, we see something really unique. On the right, you see that the hydrogen ion doesn't have an electron at all. It lost its electron and became positively charged because that means that there are more, there's still a proton and a neutron in the hydrogen, but no electrons. So that's why there's more charge in the center than there is on the outside, okay? Now, on the left, you see an OH negative or a hydroxide ion. See, it, that, when it split, it kept all of the electrons. So there's still 10 electrons, but only one hydrogen and one oxygen. So now we have an extra electron, which means there's more charge out there in that outer field than there is on the inside. So that's why we have a negative charge, okay? So negative means we have extra, positive means we're missing an electron, okay? Ions are very important in ionized water, right? That's where it gets its name, from the ions. Now, when you put molecules of water together with electricity, 
we get some very interesting um, things going on. Depending on where the electrons are when in, in orbit, when, it, when the electricity passes through, it will either make ions or it will make atoms and molecules. So here, uh, depending on where everything is sitting, when the electricity comes in contact with the water molecule, we can either end up with an OH negative and an H, which are two ions, or we could end up with a single atom of oxygen and a molecule of hydrogen. Pretty interesting, right? So um, they each have their roles. So ions create pH changes. So the OH negative or the hydroxide ion makes the water alkaline. So the higher the concentration of OH negatives we have in the water, the more alkaline it is. And the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions, the more acidic the water is. Okay? But the H2 is where we get the antioxidants. So hydrogen as a gas, you can see hydrogen bubbles in the water when it's really fresh. The hydrogen gas acts as an antioxidant all on its own. And it is responsible for mitigating or neutralizing some of the worst free radicals in our bodies and or in nature, but we're specifically talking about our human body. So it can actually be a powerful antioxidant on its own. But inside your water ionizer, when it's nice and clean and the plates are available because there's no calcium buildup, the everything's nice and clean. When that hydrogen gas comes in contact with the platinum in the plates in your water ionizer, it freely gives up its electrons. Now this doesn't last very long. These free electrons are volatile. They don't last very long, but they're super powerful. They can mitigate any free radical, and we're gonna see how that works in a, a little later tonight. So your water ionizer, as it split up the water and got some hydrogen gas, the higher the concentration of hydrogen gas, the more antioxidants you'll have. You'll have some that are in the, the form of hydrogen gas and some that are in the form of free electrons. And as these free electrons and the hydrogen gas build up in your water, you create the perfect antioxidant. So, so while hydrogen gas is kind of a specific antioxidant, free electrons are absolutely free. They can mitigate any free radical in the body. So let's talk about free radicals and antioxidants. So a free radical, here this is a free radical oxygen. Something happened and it knocked an electron out of orbit. And so now it's missing an electron. In nature, it, nature does not like unpaired electrons. It makes that, that um, atom very unstable. And so it's always going to be searching for an electron to replace the one it lost. And it's going to look for an electron and steal it any place it can. So this is the problem with free radicals is that they are radical and they are going, they're like free agents, like the evil kind of free agents. And they are going to go out and steal an electron from any place it can find it. So here's how free radicals are formed. So you start with a stable atom and then something happens. Uh, uh, exposure to x-rays or UV rays or heavy metals or different kinds of toxins and air pollution, some of the things that we eat like alcohol and sodas, sugar, uh, some of the things that we expose ourselves to like we all are right now as we sit in front of our computers or TVs or cell phones or water pollution will create a, or a, a, me a mechanical action like starting an engine, even things in our body like our normal immune function, inflammation, the way our cells breathe, emotional stress, all of those things can create a free radical. And uh, you'll, you'll know more about this later. But when that happens, this oxygen that went from stable to unstable now creates oxidation. 
free radicals create oxidation. So all that a free radical needs is an electron. So when you're drinking ionized water and you're drinking it really fresh and your machine is really clean, and as we're gonna talk about next week when it's when it's nice and clean, the water going into the machine is nice and clean, you get an, you get an, an enormous amount of free electrons. And those free electrons are the perfect antioxidant because they can replace those missing electrons and stop that free radical from being a free radical and restore it back into just being an oxygen atom. And as you know, oxygen in our bodies are super important. If we don't have enough oxygen, our cells are very unhealthy. If we don't have enough oxygen, we pass out. <laughs> if we don't have enough oxygen, we cease to exist um, in living form. So, so oxygen is very important, but free radical oxygen is very damaging. Now, your, your body, all of our human bodies, contain about 100 trillion cells. So that's a big number, right? 100 trillion cells, and they all have a few things in common. And this is just a cutaway of cells. So you can see that there's a lot going on inside that cell. But one of the things that every cell has in common with every other cell is that they all have a, a cell membrane. Now, that cell membrane is designed to allow oxygen to come in <clears throat> as needed, to allow water to come in as needed, and to allow carbon dioxide and a few other waste products to get out as needed. And it's made up of primarily fat. It's called a phospholipid bilayer. So what that means, lipid is fat, and phospho is, phos is a short for phosphorus, so what it means is that it's a fat, that has a phosphorus atom embedded in it. And there's two layers of it, that's why it's called the bilayer. And you can see they each have little tails and they come together and meet in the middle, right? So we have, this is called a phospholipid bilayer. It's so important that it be semi-permeable and allow this this oxygen and water to come in as necessary and the carbon dioxide to get out. When it has enough oxygen, it creates more energy really easily. When it has enough water, the pH is balanced perfectly. And when this, the carbon dioxide can get out, it keep, that also helps to keep the pH perfect. So this is how a cell, is suppo a cell membrane is supposed to work. But every single one of those hundred trillion cells is bombarded by at least 10,000 free radicals every day. That's a lot of free radicals. That's a lot. Uh, and remember, free radicals create oxidation. And we're gonna exp I'm going to explain to you how that works. So as these free radicals keep bombarding and bombarding and bombarding the cells, <clears throat> that cell membrane begins to change. Now, some of, the, um, some of the free radicals, as you see, are coming from the outside, but we also have some free radicals that are actually coming from the inside of your cell. This cutaway is a picture of uh, mitochondria. And so inside the cell, um, there are these little energy production centers. It's like a little factory in there. And that's where we produce ATP. And that's the molecule of energy that we need to keep our cells functioning. And the more, um, the more that cell has to function, the more, uh, the more mitochondria it has. And so what happens in this process is that for each molecule of energy of ATP that's made, we get two really terrible free radicals of H2O2, and we also get two free radicals of oxygen, two oxidized um, oxygen atoms. So we end up with more free radicals than we do energy just from this process. This is 
this is really important to understand is that our bodies in the process of cellular respiration, of making energy, produce free radicals. And some of those free radicals are used for good and some of them are damaging to our cells. Now, when enough damage has happened on the inside of that phospholipid bilayer and on the outside of that phospholipid bilayer, the cell membrane changes. Now, this took me quite a long time to figure out. <laughs> and for those of you who don't know, I was a chef for over 20 years before I became a naturopath. And so it was like everything came together one day when I realized what was happening. You all know what oxidized fat is like, if you think about it. Oxidized fat is the same as the fat on the vent fan in your kitchen. That thick, sticky, gooey fat, that's oxidized fat. So when enough oxidation, when enough free radicals have attacked the cell membrane inside and outside, that cell membrane begins to become oxidized fat. And so it starts to repel a great deal of the oxygen that's trying to get in. It begins to repel the water that's trying to get in and it traps the carbon dioxide. And now we have a very upset cell. We have a cell that doesn't have enough oxygen to make a ATP, enough ATP. We do, it doesn't have enough water to balance the pH inside the cell. The CO2, the carbon dioxide, is trapped inside the cell, raising the, the uh, upsetting the pH balance even more. And now we have a very unhealthy cell. So this is, so remember when I said that I, in my biological medicine classes, and like most of you were concentrating this whole time on pH and why that was so important. It was really all about oxidation because oxidation actually created dehydration in the cell. And that dehydration in the cell led to a pH change which created inflammation. And this is how the cycle goes. It goes oxidation causes dehydration and dehydration causes inflammation. And down the spiral of ill health we go. That's where every one of these things starts. So if you were to take any one of these subjects, like diabetes or uh, asthma or macular degeneration or, or Crohn's disease, and if you, if you were to Google, do a Google search on it, and you'd say, uh, macular degeneration and oxidation. You'd find that that's the root cause. I mean, at least there, it's in, it's a factor in every single one of these disease processes or illnesses. Oxidation is the common link in every single one of these things. Crazy, right? Took. <laughs> it took me a while to figure this out, but it was like, it was a huge light bulb moment for me. So if oxidation is the problem, then antioxidants are the logical answer, right? So here are common antioxidants, vitamin A, C, and E. You've all, you all know about those. And selenium. And then there's something that our, our bodies produce on their own, which is glutathione and superoxid ox <laughs> SOD, super oxmutase. Oh, well, anyway, it won't come out. It won't roll off my tongue right now, um, but we'll get there. So glutathione and SOD are produced by our body as uh, and, and used as antioxidants. So we can take in A, C, and E and selenium and then some of those things, then some of the other minerals that we eat and some of, the, some of the constituents in the food we eat help us produce glutathione, which is a master antioxidant produced inside the cell, and SOD. Superoxide dismutase. There we go. We got it. Now, it comes from an entire array of food, these vitamins A and C and E, and selenium are all, they require us to eat amazing, colorful foods and 
even chocolate and coffee and you know no, it's not always just the things we think about like like uh, leafy greens or berries it also comes in the form of spices and different colors so you, anytime you see a colorful fruit or vegetable or spice that's going to contain lots and lots of antioxidants but there's some things I want to explain to you about antioxidants. So here are some, you know, headlines that you've probably heard about that reports claim that eating more antioxidant rich foods and taking daily supplements is the answer. We heard that for years, right? We heard that you've got to eat these foods. If you eat these foods, it's going to decrease your chance of cancer and heart disease and strokes. It's, it's really going to help. And then I learned something very disappointing. I learned that antioxidants have some very big limitations, that antioxidants are tissue specific. So vitamin A helps support mucous membranes in lungs, but it doesn't do anything for your cardiovascular system. And vitamin C supports your connective tissue and your skin, but it doesn't really help your mucous membranes and lungs. And vitamin E helps support your cardiovascular system, and it does help with some healing in the skin, but it does not help your mucous membranes and your lungs. So they're very tissue specific. So it, it's really incumbent upon you to, to try to have all of this right balance of, of all of these particular vitamins. But antioxidants in the form of food and supplements even have some serious drawbacks. Only 25% of the antioxidants that you consume in food and your supplements can actually be used by your body. So 75% just pass through. Mm -hmm. And in high doses, vitamins A and E are actually toxic to your liver because they're fat soluble vitamins and they get stored by the liver and they can actually become quite toxic. But here's the thing that shocked me the most that I learned about antioxidants is that, and it's very logical, I just never thought of it until one of my colleagues and I were teaching some stuff and he said, but you know this, right? I'm like, no, I didn't. I never thought of it that way, that, that when an antioxidant in the food that you eat and the, the supplements that you take do their job of quenching a free radical, they become a weak free radical themselves because they gave away an electron. So they can, so uh, I'm not saying don't eat those foods or take those supplements, I'm not saying that. It's really helpful. But you have to understand that we don't, it's the reason we don't see dramatic shifts in health by just, I mean, we do, I, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. We, we don't see a lot of curative effects uh, by taking high doses of vitamins or having a, a perfect diet because those things actually add to the oxidative stress levels in your body. They're doing their job of quenching a terrible free radical, but in exchange, you get a weak free radical. So they are reducing the overall load of terribly bad, really harmful free radicals, but in their wake, they leave a weak free radical. So we're never able by just eating um, really great food and taking supplements, we're never able to stop oxidative stress. We cannot stop it because we're always going to be adding um, some oxidation to the equation. So what if we could create the perfect antioxidant when it's expensive and it re it would, it's non-specific and it it's colorless and odorless and you know it's easy and it's let and it's inexpensive what if we could do that what if we could help cell membranes heal themselves what if we could make a change 
on a cellular level with a perfect antioxidant? Well, we can. Hydrogen gas, like I said, is really important because on its own, it takes care of some of the, mo of the worst free radicals. That H2O2 that we saw in that illustration, that one is a terrible free radical and hydrogen gas will mitigate that. And when we expose that hydrogen gas to platinum, it actually gives us free electrons. And these free electrons are able, whoops, sorry, are able to mitigate any and all free radicals anywhere in the body. Now, this is a really big topic. And so we're going to take a lot of time to, take, to answer questions tonight. So I'm sure that a lot of you have some questions about this, and so I'm going to do my best. But what I want you to understand is that when we share this information, when we share the fact that we can stop any free radical from, form, from doing damage, we can actually repair those cell membranes because as we flood our body with hydrogen gas and free electrons, it will actually give electrons back to the, to the fat in the cell membrane and begin to restore that cell membrane. And when the cell membrane is restored, it now is taking in enough oxygen. It's now taking in enough water. So now we have a high functioning cell that's making lots of ATP for energy. We have a high functioning cell that, <clears throat> that has the proper pH because every cell has a different pH value and now we're restoring that pH value exactly where it needs to be. Some cells need to be acidic. Some cells need to be moderately acidic. Some need to be moderately alkaline. Some need to be more alkaline. For instance, vaginal tissues are at, they're ideally at about 4.5 in pH but in your small intestine, those should be about 8.5. Um, in, um, in your stomach, you want it to be about 1.5. So you see, we have way, there's so many different pH values in the body. And as long as that's, that those individual cells in each one of those tissues are able to take in enough oxygen to produce energy and they're able to take in enough water to balance the pH, things stay healthy. And the only way to do that is to reverse that thick, sticky, vent fan style fat on the cell membrane. When we have accomplished that, we change, everything changes. Everything changes. So this is the most important thing that you can begin to concentrate on. This is why I told you last week that the pH of the water is all fine and good, but it is not the star player. This right here on this screen, this is the star player. The antioxidants in the form of hydrogen gas and the antioxidants in the form of free electrons, those are the star players of ionized water. And you only get these in large quantities when you have a machine that delivers enough electricity that has large enough plates. So you have to have enough electricity to split the water molecule and to split a lot of them. You need you need to have a large enough surface area so that the hydrogen gas, once it's split away from the oxygen, can reach the platinum. The more of the hydrogen gas that touches the platinum, comes in contact with it, the more free electrons we get. So now we have a water in our glass that's filled with, it's filled with H2O. It's also got some oxygen in there. It's got some hydrogen gas in there and it has a lot of free electrons. Now, like I said, those free electrons are pretty volatile. So you gotta drink that water right away. As soon as the water in your glass or your jug or your container comes in contact with the air, all these things begin to change. Because these free rat, these antioxidants that are gonna mitigate free radicals, they don't, they're not smart enough to know that you want them to wait until you swallow them. 
they're going to take care of whatever free radicals they come in contact with. And since our air has a lot of pollution, has a lot of free radicals in it, that's why, you know, if you think about the fact that if you leave a metal shovel outside for an extended period of time, it comes in contact with oxidized oxygen in the air and it begins to break down and get rusty, right? Because there's, there's free radicals everywhere. They're, bar they're bombarding us constantly. So it doesn't know that you need it to wait until you swallow it to start acting. So it's gonna act on the air. It's gonna mitigate the free radicals that are all around you, that are in the air, that are everywhere around you. So that's why it's so important. Two things are absolutely essentially important. That machine has to be kept clean all of the time. Because the minute that calcium starts coating the plates in your machine, the hydrogen gas can't come in contact with the platinum. And the, the, thicker the, the thicker the coating of calcium on the plates, the less electricity is going through the water. So you get less uh, water molecule split. So you have less hydrogen gas. So in order to have enough hydrogen gas to leave you some hydrogen gas and make some free electrons, got to have that plat those platinum plates cleaned religiously, right? So that's one thing. Next thing is got to make it fresh and you got to drink it fresh. That's where you're going to get the biggest bang for your buck. All right. So when we share this water with people, it's really important how you share it. Share it in small glass bottles that are the size that when you open it, you would consume it all in not more than 20 minutes. So you want to fill it all the way to the top so it's actually spilling over, put a cap on it, and when they open it, they drink it down. So lots of small bottles, not big bottles, not big gallon jugs, things like that, because the minute you take some water out, the antioxidants begin to dissipate. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not gonna get some benefit from the water because the water's still alkaline and the faster and the more alkaline it is, the faster it passes through your stomach. And so you're getting greater hydration and most people are really dehydrated. But until we remove the oxidation on the cell membrane until that's healed, we're never going to see a huge shift in people's health because it's the water's not getting into enough of the cells. Each cell's not getting enough water. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So when we share this information, we can actually impact the health of people all around the world just one glass of water at a time, okay? So uh, we're, we're gonna talk about your three minute elevator speech and your homework assignments and then we're gonna take questions. So here we started. Um, so these are some bonus points. Your water ionizing unit starts with just ordinary tap water, it filters it and then it passes through an electrical field where the water is broken up and some antioxidants are created. And at the same time, it creates slightly alkaline drinking water. And the main advantage to that, uh, to drinking that slightly alkaline water is that it passes directly through the stomach and contributes to faster and more effective hydration. And your DNA is not your destiny. When you give your body the tools it needs to heal itself, it does exactly that. And then in week one, all health challenges stem from the same core problems. The oxidation is the main culprit. Oxidation leads to dehydration, and that leads to inflammation. And so once again, so if you see this on more than one week, you know it's really important. Your DNA is not your destiny. When you give your body the tools it needs to heal itself, it does exactly that. Now, for week two, for today, here are your most, the most important things for you to begin to work into your elevator speech. Free radicals are just atoms or molecules that have lost an electron, and they are on a mission to find one, and they do not hesitate to steal an electron from anywhere they can. All of our cells, about 100 trillion of them, are bombarded by 10,000 of these free radicals every day. Free radicals are responsible for aging 
as well as all known illnesses, but all of free radical needs is an antioxidant to stop it. Oh, I, I still haven't changed that. So H2O, I don't know how I got that mistake, but I've got to go back and remember to change it. I'm writing myself a note right now. <laughs> um, ionized water contains more universal antioxidants than any other food or beverage, plus it's tasteless and it has zero calories. Okay? Now, while var variety is the spice of life, facts remain. So there are so many perspectives from different educational points of view and different educators about ionized water, and you're going to hear tons of things. So always double check everything. And if you've been telling people something and you find out that that maybe wasn't quite accurate, that really wasn't how it works because that happened to me. There wasn't very much information in 2005 about ionized water and I made some radically bad assumptions based on what people had told me. And then I did research and I found out I was wrong. And so I had to go back and correct everybody the best I could. So admitting that you made a mistake or that you learned something new that shed a different light on it is it makes you a perfectly imperfect leader of your team. So never hesitate to go back and correct something. As you learn something, go back and correct whatever it is that you've told people that wasn't quite right. Okay? Now, here's your homework assignment. So last week I told you that I wanted you to start thinking about using ions um, and talking about ions and ion ionized water, that sort of thing, instead of alkalinity. So repetition is the key to understanding. So ion, ionizer, ionized. These are the words that you want to work into your vocabulary. Since the antioxidants are the true workhorses, they're the stars of ionized water, we want to concentrate on those because alkaline is not the component that provides the greatest impact, okay? So your, so that's your homework assignment, is to repeat this over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, all right? Now, here are some Q&A, some emailed Q&A. Um, I got, I don't know, a lot of, I don't know how to log on to the recorded webinar. The directions are in the email. So what I noticed was that a lot of people were trying to log back into this Zoom site in order to listen to the recording, but that's only to listen live. And it's the same, save that email that has all the directions in it because it's gonna be the same directions for every single week of these 12 weeks, okay? So you're, you wanna save that link and save the, the uh, password, okay? Then the second question I got was, how do I, can I, ha, can I be one of your patients? And yeah, I mean, I do some virtual um, consultations, and so um, all you have to do is contact me at my email address at drparkersemail at gmail.com, and then um, I'll send you some forms to fill out, and you'll need to provide me with some basic you know, blood work or other tests that you've had done, and a current dental panoramic or panogram x-ray. And so everybody that's in the advanced class right now knows exactly why that's important. <laughs> so when you finish this um, intro course, you can hop on and start taking the advanced courses, and then a lot of this will become really important to you. And then I had a few more people say, can you help me talk to my prospects or can you help me talk to another doctor or can you help me talk to my spouse or whatever? And I'm, I'm so happy to do that. So all you have to do is email me and we set an appointment and I charge $45 for 15 minutes or $75 for 30 minutes. And you, in the short one, you get to send me the three most important questions that you have. Because if you give me the questions in advance that you really are 
you know, interested in getting answered or that your prospect is having a problem with, that gives me an opportunity to get really focused and be able to answer those as completely and quickly as possible so that potentially there's time for more discussion, okay? Now on to your questions. So did anybody send us a chat question? Nope. So um, if it's not noisy in your background, you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Oh, okay. I'm ready. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. This is going to sound basic. Okay. So that's okay. I'm drinking a glass of water, and the only problem I have is down in down in my toe. That's where my yeah. antioxidants. How do those free electrons get to my toe? Well, so here's one of the things that happens, is that <clears throat> the more antioxidants you have in your body, the more of them that get into your bloodstream. And so it might take a little bit for, you know, drinking the water for a bit of time to be able to address things all downstream until it gets to your toe, but sometimes your body's does it differently because your body's really an intelligent uh, determiner of what it needs and where it needs it. And so sometimes people notice things in their extremities before they notice anything else. But I can guarantee you that if you are having a problem in your toe, it goes all the way upstream. And so you don't just have oxidized problem in your toe you've got it in a lot of other places as well you've okay. got it in your circulatory mm -hmm. system or else there would be enough blood getting there to deliver the nutrients that it needed to heal your toe it's it's um, clogged up your lymphatic fluid and so your lymph isn't getting lymphatic fluid isn't getting down there to take away debris and bring the antioxidants that are necessary so it, it happens all the way through your body. Okay, that was, I think I was more a asking around the transportation method. And I think what you're saying is that it will get there eventually. It Via blood to, and lymphatic fluid. Yep, it just has to get there o over time. Right? Yes, because no, first it has to get through your small intestine and then it has to get into your bloodstream and then it gets there. So, and we'll, you'll find out a lot more about that as the, as the series goes on. Okay. But a great question. Well, I'm wondering how a free electron would last that long to get into your small intestine though. It wouldn't, would it? Yes, it sure does. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Not all of them because some of the antioxidants, the, ga the hydrogen or the free electrons are gonna get used up in your mouth and in your esophagus and, but, that's where, this is where the pH is important because the more alkaline in the water, the faster it passes through your stomach and into your small intestine. Oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone Dr. else have a question? Yes, Dr. Parker, this is Aid. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, kind of been uh, looking online and uh, looking up hydrogen. Right. So uh, I've been, uh, this one particular guy that I was looking at, uh, he's saying that uh, there's a therapeutic dose of hydrogen that you should get, but uh, he was telling me that it should be, he's saying that it should be in between one and eight uh, uh, parts per million. Mm -hmm. so, Tyler, I, is that who you're talking yeah, to? Yeah, that's that guy. So what is the actual therapeutic dose? You know, um, as far as I can tell from his research and other researchers, we don't actually have a number, okay. but the higher the concentration, the better. And so Tyler used to be an Enagic um, distributor and then he left and he developed his own machine and it's not a very good machine and it doesn't produce very good quality um, water and not very much hydrogen. So then they started adding things to the water to produce more um, hydrogen gas. They started adding uh, magnesium chloride, which is the same thing that we put on our sidewalks here in Spokane to melt the ice. Oh, wow. It's not a very high quality magnesium 
And so a little harder on your body than other forms to assimilate than other forms. So um, I think Tyler's a brilliant guy and, um, and he and I disagree on ionized water and the fact that anytime you try to isolate one thing, like you're trying to just isolate hydrogen, you're missing the other components. If you're, if you're trying to get hydrogen at any cost, whether it's breathing it or drinking it or whatever, you're missing the other cofactors that make it work. But if we can increase the amount of hydrogen in the water, we're gonna get more therapeutic effect because we're gonna create more antioxidants. Okay. Did that answer your question, sort of? It kind of, yeah, I, I, because I'm worried about, the, uh, I'm concerned about the amount of uh, hydrogen that uh, I measure it, I got these uh, H2 drops, Yes. And I was trying to measure it, and uh, I was a little bit disappointed uh, because then I thought about it. I, I uh, heard that it has an accum accumulative effect. It does. But the, the, but the amount of uh, um, hydrogen that I was getting was very low. I so there, there can be some reasons behind that, and we're going to talk about those next week. Part of it's water quality, and part of it is the how clean your machine is. Okay. And how fast you run the water. So that's yeah, going to be yeah, I know our topic too. of conversation for next week. Okay. And we've got um, like about four minutes left. Did you want to say something else, Abe? Yes, uh, I would. So um, what I'm hearing from you tonight is that the hydrogen is, is effective, but it's actually the electrons that do the work. The free electrons? No, the hydrogen gas um, is going to act as an antioxidant and it's going to mitigate, it's going to give away an electron and it's going to mitigate a bad free radical, leaving a weak free radical behind. Okay. But the free electrons don't leave anything behind. They're just free electrons. They just stop a free radical and there's no there's nothing left in the in the wake. There's no weak free radicals. There's no there's no nothing. So the more free radical, the more free electrons we make, the more free radicals we um, stop. And this is how we actually stop the cycle of oxidation. Because hydrogen gas, food, supplements, all leave weak free, weak free radicals behind when they do their job. Free electrons don't do that. So this is why this is where Tyler and I uh, disagree. <laughs> so you can have a lot of hydrogen gas in your water or you can breathe it, but it's still going to leave a weak free radical behind. But if it's coming in contact with platinum and you're getting free electrons, no, no weak free radicals left behind. Does that make sense? Yeah, the plates are very important, Dan. Yes, they are. Okay. All right, Dan. Anyone else have a quick question before we sign off for the week? Well, yeah, okay. I, I want to ask this one more thing. You said that it's very important to drink the water right away. Yes. So I'm going around uh, giving people water to drink, but I'm telling them that it's only like good for a couple of days. So how effective is it after uh, you know two days? If you're saying we should drink it fresh right away, so if you're giving it in a gallon jug, it's not it's not very effective after 30 minutes. Oh really? Oh my God! That's why it's important to do it in small containers. Oh God! So the more small containers you do, the bigger results you'll see. And I I'm gonna later on in this series you'll see some test results um, that I took and and it'll help you really understand this even more. And unfortunately, because I have an advanced class following here in two minutes gotta sign off and so write all your questions down for next week uh, you can email them to me you can just write them down and then type them in as soon as you log on I love this class I am so excited about all of you it is my greatest honor in the world to get to share this stuff with you I 
it makes my week. Mondays are my favorite day of the week because I get to talk to you and I get to share this with you because it's been my passion since 2005 to share this information with as many people as possible, but I'm only one person, so I need all of you because it's together. It's that together when we're all doing it together, that's how we change the world. So until next Monday, change the world by talking about antioxidants. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Bye. Appreciate you. Bye. 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 Bye.